It's St. Patrick's Day, so let's keep it green by only using Grass-type Pokémon. It's been a while since I've done a Hardcore Nuzlocke using only one type, so let's see if I still have the skills to do it. This was filmed during my March break, so you won't be seeing my face, but instead you'll have the rules in the top right corner. And before we begin, if you guys aren't subscribed, what are you guys doing? Go down and subscribe. It really does help. Now let's see if I can beat Pokémon White with only Grass-type Pokémon. If you guys haven't seen my tier list video that I made a couple weeks ago, go check it out. I rank all the starters based on how good I think they are in a Nuzlocke both in a ROM hack and in traditional Nuzlocke. But in general, I did have to put Grass starters below Fire and Water starters. Grass type starters aren't usually too bad, and most of them are decent Pokémon. Sorry Chikorita, but you do get cuteness points. But if I'm going to be using a full team of Grass type Pokémon, then this challenge can get quite difficult. The problem with Grass type Pokémon is that they have way too many weaknesses. Fire, Flying, Ice, Bug, and Poison. 4 out of the 8 gym leaders deal super effective damage against us, and if we include the fact that Dragon resists grass moves, that's more than half the gym leaders that we don't have a good type matchup against. This challenge is certainly gonna be hard, but we do manage to get a good Snivy with great stats. It's neutral natured with overall great IVs. The first part of this game is just soloing with Snivy. We don't get another encounter until after the second gym, so there really isn't much that you can do. You know, usually bad guys try to hide their evil intentions, but Team Plasma doesn't give a sh They make themselves loud and clear. We also get to meet their king, N, who's gonna pose some trouble to us later on in the game. There isn't much else to do, so it's on to fight the gym leaders. First we got Chili. Chili isn't that hard of a gym leader because even though he is a fire-type specialist, his first Pokémon is Lillipup that we can use to set up on. After giving Snivy an Orenberry that Charon gives us after defeating him in a rival battle, I'm able to set up growths four times, increasing our attack to three times. This gives us enough attack to take out the Lillipup in one shot with a crit. When he sends out his ace Pokémon, Panseer, I've already built up enough attack to be able to take him out with two tackles. A simple battle like this earns us the first badge. Again, there really isn't much to do between now and the second gym, but I do make sure to catch myself a second Pokémon to be used as my HM intern. There is a rival battle with Charon that could pose a challenge, but I had the level advantage, so it really wasn't too bad. It also gave me enough experience to get the evolution into Servine. After making my way into Nacreen City and solving Lenora's gym puzzle, I'll be going into the battle with one Pokémon. Winning a battle like this is not an easy feat, but you know your boy has some tricks up his sleeves. I start the battle with the intention of setting up as much as I can. I Leech Seed the Herdier to get back some HP, and set up as many growths as I can before my health gets too low. In the end, with the help of a Citrus Berry, I was able to set up 4 growths before taking out the Herdier with a Leaf Tornado. Now what makes Lenora hard is the fact that her Watchog in the back has the move Retaliate, a move that doubles in damage if used right after one of your own Pokémon was taken out. But somehow, I got lucky enough that Leaf Tornado dropped the Watchog's accuracy and caused him to miss the Retaliate not killing me in one shot. Something like this takes insane luck, so I think this by itself deserves a sub. With Lenora defeated, we come out to the museum to see Team Plasma stealing the Dragon Skull. Since it's always up to us to solve their problems, they lead us all the way to the forest, where we can catch our second encounter. Petalil as of right now isn't that good because it needs to evolve into a Lilligant, but trust me, once it does, it will put in a lot of work. Now in Castelia City, we still have to deal with Team Plasma's shenanigans before we can make it to the next gym. Thankfully, they don't challenge us with any battles, so we can move straight on to Berg. Berg is an extremely difficult gym leader because he has three Pokémon that can do massive damage, while I only have one being Servine. I start the battle by Leech Seeding the Whirlipede so I could set up growths in the next few turns. After he went for a couple pursuits, it allowed me to set up four growths. This gave me enough attack to take out the Whirlipede with a tackle. Second is Dwebble who goes down to a Leaf Tornado since I do have boosted special attack. Finally is the Levani who can deal ridiculous amounts of damage. She goes for a Struggle Bug lowering my special attack as I hit a tackle for a third of her health. I'm then able to hit a second tackle when he tries to lower my speed with a string shot, and since I'm in range to kill, I go for a second tackle just to be taken down to 3 HP with a second struggle bug. That was even closer than the Lenora fight. It was also at this point where I realized that since I am in Castelia City, I could have gotten the Eviolite. That's a little mistake on my part. Now that we have 3 badges, Bianca deems us worthy for a challenge again, but we have a huge level advantage, so she's not that challenging of a fight. Charon 2 also isn't that big of a deal. He is a little bit more difficult, but our levels are simply too high to be beat. Of course, this does come at a cost because it means we're close to getting to the point where we can't use him anymore. This problem is solved by us catching another encounter. In the Desert Resort, we're able to catch another encounter being Maractus. Now admittedly, Maractus is not the best Pokémon because it doesn't specialize at anything. It's not that offensive, and it's not that defensive. It's really more of just an XP sink. There's also another encounter we can get in Lost Lorne Forest before fighting Elisa. By encountering a Pokémon only in the Rustling Grass, we're extremely likely to get ourselves a Pansage. Pansage and Simisage in the future are probably some of the best Pokémon because their learn set is the widest out of any of our possible encounters. Now just before fighting Elisa, we have to do a fight against our rival Anne. 
This fight is extremely difficult because two of his Pokemon specifically counter our Grass Team. His Sandile is easy enough to take out. A simple Mega Drain does the trick. But when he sends out Darumaka, both a fast and offensive Pokemon, a Fire Punch barely takes out Simisage as I go for a dig to take out the Darumaka. This is extremely scary. The next Pokemon he sends in is a Sigilyph with Air Cutter, another extremely damaging move. I switch into Servon because Simisage is almost dead, and I have to take an Air Cutter coming in. But as he whirlwinds me out, I put him to sleep with Sleep Powder. This allows me to switch back into Servon and use a Leech Seed to drain health from the Sigilyph. He whirlwinds me out into Maractus, so I just use a turn to Needle Arm the Sigilyph. After taking another Air Cutter, a second one takes him out. His final Pokemon Scraggy easily goes down to a couple Leaf Tornadoes, winning us against N. Quite a difficult battle if you ask me. I really don't want to go into any risky battles like that anymore, but unfortunately, the next one with Elisa is going to be risky. Both of her Emolgas know Aerial Ace, and her final Pokemon Zebstrika has a Fire-type move in Flame Charge. This is going to be very difficult to get around because not all of my Pokemon can do super effective damage. Luckily, the first two Emolgas go down pretty easily with Rock Tombs, so it's really just her final Zebstrika that's a challenge. Luckily for us, a single dig does enough damage to take out the Zebstrika, winning us the battle. As we exit Nimbasa, having received the 4th Gym Badge, Charon battles us to another rival fight, this time with a team that's more balanced. His team is closer to us in level, so I have to start off with a Leech Seed before hitting Leaf Tornadoes. Of course, the next Pokemon he sends in has to be a Flying-type. I managed to get off a couple Leaf Tornadoes that actually aren't that weak, so surprisingly, Tranquil was actually able to go down from just my Servine. Of course, saving best for last, when he sends in his Pig Knight, I make the switch into Simiseer and hit a dig to take out the Pig Knight in one shot. Finally, once his own Pansage goes down, we've won against Charon. Certainly a more difficult battle, but not too bad. Elisa introduces us to Alder, which, in case you guys don't know, loses the championship to some kid with daddy issues. Of course, we don't care, so after making it to Drifthill City, we're off to catch our next encounter. On Route 6, if we only go into Rustling Grass, we guarantee ourselves a Levani encounter. If you guys haven't seen my Grass or Bug Only video in Pokemon White 2, then you'll know that Levani is an insane Pokemon and does amazing work in the Elite Four. It gets a bunch of attacking moves on top of the move Swords Dance. After making sure to get the Expert Belt and clearing out the Cold Storage, it's finally time to face Clay, the 5th Gym Leader. If you expected Clay to be easy, then you'd be absolutely correct. I went into the battle without prepping and I still defeated him easily. Seed Bomb easily took out the Croc Rock, and two digs took out the Excadrill. This just left the Palpitoad that easily went down to another Seed Bomb, giving us an easy 5th Gym Leader battle. Bianca tries to challenge us again as we leave Drifthill City, but she ain't got nothing on us. In Charge Stone Cave, we meet up with N again, and he's acting quite suspicious. Luckily, we do get to catch another encounter in Pharaoh Seed, our defensive specialist on this team. I'm also able to catch myself a Deerling, one of the cutest Pokemon in this game. It really doesn't do much other than being able to deal stab damage with Return. In the Celestial Tower, I get myself the Shadow Claw TM, a move that's going to be extremely useful for the Elite Four. Oh yeah, and I'm also here to return Skyla to her gym. If you guys think Skyla is a very difficult gym leader, then you're absolutely correct. All of Skyla's Pokémon are fast, offensive, and can deal massive damage with super effective Flying-type moves. There's really nothing special about this battle except that we have to brute force our way through. Now the Swoobat went down to a single Shadow Claw, which is great, and the Unpheasant goes down to two returns. Finally, the Swan is a different story. The only real solution to the Swana is to Leech Seed it and slowly whittle down its health. Eventually, after swapping into Ferris Seed, my defensive specialist, I was finally able to stall out the Swana long enough so that Leech Seed can take out its health. This was actually a pretty simple fight, considering that she is super effective against us. We also got enough XP to evolve Servine into Superior. With 6 badges to our name, we're challenged again by Charon to see if he can do any better. He starts with an Unpheasant that goes down to 2 returns. He tries playing tricks by taunting me, but I'm not too scared. Second is his Pig Knight. He is a Fire-type, but it's currently raining at the route that we're fighting on, so I'm not too afraid of his Fire-type attacks. Again, two returns take out the Pig Knight. His Lightheart is next, but easily goes down to a Seed Bump after faking me out. His final Pokémon is his own Simi-Sage that I make the switch into Levani and use an Excisor to take out the Simi-Sage. Again, not a very difficult fight. Alder ambushes us, but I'm surprised he doesn't break his knees, considering that he is an old man. Twist Mountain is a winding complex of tunnels and caverns, but after finally making it through, I arrive in Icerus City. I remember the first time I played Pokemon White, where I tried to make it through the caves. I got lost so many times because I was playing during the winter where the snow blocks off everything. I also remember never making it past this point, so this cave really is kind of nostalgic for me. But now that we're out, we go straight into the 7th gym. Even though Bryson is super effective against us, defensively, he isn't that much better. Although his Pokemon do have crazy strong moves that can decimate us, if we can take him out first turn, then that's no problem for us. I start by Leech seeing the Vanillish and setting up a bunch of coils to raise our attack and defense and accuracy. Surprisingly, he doesn't go for a super effective ice move and instead uses acid armor to boost his defense. Maybe a smart play. However, this does give us three turns to set up more coils, so after setting up three of them, I hit a leaf blade and take out the vanillish on the next turn. When the bear tick comes out, I know he can do big damage to us, but he misses an icicle crash, so we get the free hit onto the bear tick, taking it down to red health. After Bryson heals for a turn, a third leaf blade takes out the bear tick. 
Finally, this leaves the last Pokemon, Cryogonal. Cryogonal has no defense, so a simple Leaf Blade takes him out, winning us the seventh badge. Again, to my surprise, it was quite an easy battle. I make sure to get the evolution into Ferrothorn before entering the Dragon Spiral Tower where I have to fight a long series of grunt battles. Now, I personally think this game is great for Nuzlocking. It's short, it's quick, and it's snappy. But this part of the game is so, so boring. Why is it that in Pokemon games, there's always a point where there's a long series of grunt battles? Like, I would much prefer to have a mini boss battle instead. Okay, okay. Now that my rant is done, I finally make it up the tower to see what's going on. It's N and Reshiram. It's more of this trying to control the world shit. This part of the game drags on all the way to the desert resort, and even to Nacreen City where they give me some odd stone and finally give me permission to make progress in the game. But of course, right before I make progress, Rival Battle. She starts off with a Stout Limp, which actually is quite intimidating, so I start the turn by Leech Seeding, then I make the switch into Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is just so defensive that after setting up a bunch of curses, Gyro Ball does enough damage to take out the Stoutland and the Simiseer in the back even after taking a Flame Burst. Samurott's a more simple Pokemon to defeat. I swap into Simi and use a couple Seed Bombs to take out Samurott. And finally, the only answer to Usharna is to swap into Livani and deal super effective X Scissors. Another easy rival battle down. It doesn't seem like this last part of the game is really that difficult. In fact, I would almost go to say that the start of this game is so much more difficult because you're limited to soloing the game with one Pokemon. But don't you guys worry, everything is about to get much more difficult. After talking with Alder, Iris, and Drayden about dragons, this and that, light and dark, right and wrong, we go in to battle their gym. Drayden without a question is a difficult gym leader. All of his Pokemon have Dragon Dance, a move to boost their speed and attack. This makes every one of his Pokemon a threat. Dragon Pokemon even resists our main typing of grass, so we're gonna have to come up with some cheesy strategies. She starts with a Fracture, a Pokemon that does no Dragon Dance, so I immediately go for a Leech Seed to whittle down its health. Of course, he does go for the Dragon Dance, boosting his attack and speed. I'm trying to neutralize his attack buffs by using Coil to boost my attack and defense. This way, when we do get hit, it won't hurt that much, but we still have our attack boost. Even though this is a solid strategy, I completely forgot that his Pokemon also have Dragon Tail, a move that can force your Pokemon to switch out. He sends back Superior, forcing out my Simi Sage, so now I'm just a Pokemon against a plus 3 or Fracture. Thankfully, the AI doesn't go for a physical move and instead hits me with a Dragon Rage to deal 40 damage. Of course, his health was already low enough so that I can take it out with a return. When he sends out his Drudigan, I use the same strategy again, setting up a Leech Seed, but this time I go straight for the attack. I hit him with an Acrobatics as he hits me back with a Night Slash and taking Rough Skin damage. However, on the next turn, I get the attack off and return takes out a Drudigan. Haxorus is last, a ridiculously scary Pokemon. I contemplate going for a Leech Seed, but I really don't want to lose Simi Sage here, so I make the switch into Superior, but he hits me with a Dragon Tails forcing me out. As he starts going for Dragon Dances, I put him to sleep with Lilligan's Sleep Powder, set up a Leech Seed with Sauce Buck, and made the switch into my defensive beast, Ferrothorn. Now all I have to do is set up a bunch of Curses, and use a Gyro Ball to take out the Haxorus. This Gym Leader fight wasn't so easy, and it could have easily gotten very bad if we didn't have moves to set up our own stats. Professor Juniper congratulates us and gives us a Master Ball before directing us to the Victory Road. But right before we can do that, we have one last encounter. Fungus and Amoongus are overall great Pokemon. It's okay defensive, but its move pool is amazing. It gets access to Spore, Toxic, Leech Seed, and a whole bunch of other moves. There's also a final rival battle with Charon, and he is not an easy fight. He starts with Unpheasant while I start with Ferrothorn. He's hitting me with some powerful air slashes, but he can't get past our defense, so a couple returns take out the Unpheasant. He then sends out his main threat, Embor. Embor is faster than Ferrothorn and also sees a flamethrower as a kill. I really need Ferrothorn here, it's so good defensively that I had to make a very difficult choice here. Ultimately, I decided that Maractus was the one that had to go. It's too slow, and it doesn't perform the right job on this team. I would have preferred to sacrifice Sauzbuck here, but I didn't bring him, so I have to make do. I sent in Superior to use a Leech Seed, and after taking a Flamethrower, I swapped into Simi Sage to use Acrobatics and take out the Embor. Lightheart goes down to two Seed Bombs, and his own Simi Sage goes down to an Acrobatics. This was the first time that a rival battle actually challenged us and cost us a Pokemon. After walking through the gates to prove our worthiness, and making it through the Victory Road, we finally arrived at the Pokemon League. The Elite Four in this game is going to be very difficult, and since I don't really have any weird strategies, I'm going to have to brute force my way through this challenge. First is Marshall's Throw who nearly goes down to an Acrobatics. He does live and hits a Bulldoze, lowering my speed, so I hit him with a Seed Bomb, and on the next turn, another Acrobatics takes him out. When he sends out Mian Chao, I forgot that I've got the Speed Drop, so I thought it was faster and could kill with an Acrobatics, but instead he goes for a U-turn, swapping out into Sock, but this just allows me to break his Sturdy. He is faster, however, so I have to make the switch into Liviani, and that gives him a free turn to heal. Thankfully, two Leaf Blades are enough damage to take him out after tanking a Stone Edge. I swap in my Amoongus when he sends out his Conkildur, and after getting hit by a Hammer Arm, effects for putting him to sleep, allowing me to set up a Leech Seed and Giga Drain him to death. This just leads to Mian Chao, that I use Spore to put to sleep, and use Giga Drains to kill. The next Elite Four to fight is Caitlyn. Caitlyn uses Psychic types, so the star for this battle is going to be Lee Vanny. After setting up a Swords Dance, we're able to one-shot all of her team. 
where Uniclus goes down to an X-Scissor, and Sigilyph goes down to a Shadow Ball. Mushranar then goes down to an X-Scissor, and finally, the Gothitelle also goes down to an X-Scissor, giving us a victory over a very easy Elite Four member. Grimsey is a little bit more difficult than Caitlyn, because even though Bug is super effective against Dark, he does have a couple Pokemon that do resist Bug. The battle starts with Sawsbuck taking out the Scrafty with Jump Kicks. As he sends out Bisharp, a simple Jump Kick takes him out. Lightheart does manage to get a Fake Out on me, but a Jump Kick also takes him out in one shot. When the Crocodile comes out and intimidates me, I decide to make the switch into Levani and use a Leaf Blade to take out the last Pokemon. Three Elite Four members down, one to go. I'm gonna personally say that in no matter what run you're doing, Chantal is always the most difficult. I start by using Toxic on the Kofagrigus since there really is no way to brute force through him since he's so defensive. I do manage to take him out with a combination of Synthesis and Giga Dreams. The next Pokemon I have to worry about is the worst. Chandelure is a Fire-type Pokemon that outspeeds me and has Fire Blast. Here, I have to make a sacrifice, so I decide to sacrifice Sawsbuck to send in Simisage safely. He does manage to get the burn on me and live the first dig, but he misses his Fire Blast, so another dig takes him out. The next two Pokemon, Jellicent and Golurk, are weak to grass and easily go down to a Leaf Blade from Superior. This defeats Chantal in a pretty straightforward fight. After seeing a castle pop out of nowhere and confronting the Sages, we now have two battles left before the end of this game. Here's how they went. N starts with the Reshiram, a seriously dangerous Pokemon. I start by putting the Reshiram to sleep with Sleep Powder, and then start setting up Quiver Dances. I manage to get off two of them before the Reshiram wakes up and hits me with a Fusion Flare. With no time to waste, I hit a normal jump boost in Hyper Beam that takes out the Reshiram in one shot. This was a solid plan, but this means that Lilligan's out of commission for the next turn and simply goes down to a Blizzard from the Vanillax. At the very least, it gives me a free turn to swap in Fortress and use an Iron Head to take out the Vanillax. When he sends in his Kling Clang, which is actually a Zorok in disguise, I make sure to swap in Superior to not die to a Flamethrower and allow Leaf Blades to take out the Zoroark. This way, when he sends in his actual Kling Clang, I swap in his Simi Sage to use Digs and take him out. Archaeops is next, and my only real answer is my defensive tank Fortress. Thankfully, Archaeops is weak to Iron Heads, so a couple of those take him out easily. The very last Pokemon he sends in is a Caracosta that's quad weak to grass, so a Giga Drain from Amoongus takes him out easily. All things considered, a pretty good battle with only one death. But in reality, he's not the real problem. Getsis is. The battle starts with my Amoongus against the Kofagrigus. Here, all I can really do is stall him out, so I use a combination of Toxic, Giga Drain, and Synthesis to take him out. Unfortunately, he manages to take me out with a critical psychic before I can knock him out, so I have to send out my superior to finish the job. The next Pokemon he sends out is Hydreigon, the bane of my team. I send in Levani to use X Scissors and manages to dodge a Fire Blast to take out the Hydreigon with X Scissor. An amazing feat, but we can't celebrate just yet. After using Fortress to hit a return dealing over half his health, he hits me back with a Flamethrower taking me out. After Simi Sage takes him down to the red health with a Seed Bomb, a Flamethrower from Electros deals big damage and manages to burn me, halving my attack. Since Simi Sage is basically dead to the burn, I just sacrifice him to bring out Levani safely. Even though Leech Seed is able to take out the Electros, he still has three Pokemon left. After setting up a Swords Dance and taking a Stone Edge, I go for the last Resort X Scissor and only manage to bring the Bisharp down to red health. He retaliates with a Stone Edge taking me out, causing us to lose the challenge. It's been a while since I've done a challenge like this, so it's great to remember how much fun they are. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to keep up with my future videos.